having a lot of animals means that's a lot of mouths to feed. So you guys are coming with us today. We're gonna go buy a bunch of stuff to feed our animals. Big chain pet stores are good for some things, but uh, they also carry things like this. Dried fruit and veggie mix. You do not feed this to Russian toys. It's testudo species can't process sugar, so they should really never get fruit. Rosy minnows. So we're gonna feed our Mata Mata turtle bees. We feed these to her occasionally. We usually like to get other types of fish like killies, mud minnows, fathead minnows, bait fish, if you will. But uh, all the bait shops are out of stuff again. So we're gonna get her some rosies, but we're not gonna go with regular goldfish because technically those aren't really very safe for turtles to eat. On the rare occasion, it's okay, but it should never be a staple. Rosies shouldn't either, but they absolutely are a better choice than goldfish are. All right, so we got the live fish for John. I remember, Mata Matas eat live fish. Some people get them to eat commercial pellets. I won't even try. I like seeing the animals get what they would normally go for in the wild, at least to some extent. Uh, but now, now we gotta go pick up some serious food for Chief Brody, the alligator snapping turtle. One of the best places that you can find food for turtles is, believe it or not, a seafood market because they don't carry just saltwater fish. They will sometimes carry freshwater fish, but saltwater fish are also good in moderation. Alligator snapping turtles are a freshwater species. Right now, we need to get him through the winter, so it's all about just getting him as much fresh fish, regardless of fresh or salt water, as possible because if you remember from the original video we did on Chief Brody, which you can watch right here, he's very thin, and we are still continuing to try to put a lot of weight on him. So let's see what they got. So I got Chief Brody a couple things. I got him a whole Bronzino, so that's really awesome because he's gonna get the head, the guts, and everything, as gross as that sounds, that's important for the animal. Also got him some fresh catfish fillets, uh, some little neck clams, and some soft shell crab. So, as I said, at the pet store, sometimes we basically have to make do. We went with rosy minnows today for Jada, the Mata Mata turtle, because other more appropriate fish are not currently available. The animal still has to eat, and we're using that type of fish in moderation, so it will not hurt her. But it doesn't always have to be that way. And in fact, some food items for reptiles, especially tortoises, can be found right in your backyard, even in the Northeast, like New Jersey, and they will even grow in the winter. So it's December, it's a mild day, I'm out here in a t-shirt, but I'm gonna pick some fresh weeds for our Egyptian tortoises, and that literally is the best thing you can offer them. So this is ribwort. This is a great selection for tortoises. And I can pick this throughout the entire winter. This right here with the fuzzy leaves is called cat's ear. Another one that I can pick throughout the winter. And the tortoises really like it. This. this is purple dead nettle. This is another one that can be found throughout winter. The tortoises aren't always crazy over this, but it is good for them. So you can mix it in with some other weeds and uh, make sure that they get it in them. So, this little amount of weeds right here is perfect for a group of Egyptian tortoises. Egyptian tortoises are tiny, Northern Hemisphere's smallest tortoise species. So right there, I got an entire meal plus for my Egyptian tortoises and I didn't have to spend a dime. Before I clean up this little pile right here, I want you to see something. That is poop tortoise poop and it's an indicator that the animals are eating an appropriate diet. It's well formed, it's dark in color, and it's not messy. Still it has to come out of course but it's a nice way to find out if you're feeding your animals appropriately. So the types of weeds that you find in your area may vary and there are plenty of websites like the tortoise table that you could check out for a full list uh, or at least a close to complete list on what you should be feeding. But what we're using here is a combination of cat's ear, dandelion, broadleaf plantain and ribwort as well as purple dead nettle. So that's it. There's nothing else that needs to be done to these. They don't need to be washed off because there's no danger of pesticides. We don't treat our property and I'm just going to give it to the tortoises. So 
one thing worth bringing up really quick since this is a feeding video, you might take notice of the condition of the shells on these Egyptian tortoises. Well, these three are all rescues and they were all raised improperly and that's why they're lumpy. The point I wanna drive home here is that diet actually doesn't play as much of a role in the condition of a tortoise's shell as many people think it does. It's actually hydration. These tortoises, even though they are arid dwelling, were raised too dry. If they were raised with proper hydration and constant access to water to drink and soak in, they would have much smoother shells. So you can feed a proper diet all you want, which you absolutely should, but if you're not giving your animals sufficient hydration, they will still pyramid like this. Luckily, it's just cosmetic and these tortoises are living normal lives otherwise, but as in the case of Vinny, who is the adult female Egyptian tortoise, there's nothing that could be done for her shell condition. That's it. She will look like that for life. Lullabelle here though, she might straighten out a little bit since she's so young. Young. A lot of the animals we have eat bugs, so we started breeding dubia roaches to help us financially, and uh, well, here's our colony. So this is one of the species we keep here that will benefit from us breeding things like dubia roaches. This is an Australian spiny tail monitor. It's a dwarf species, also called Aki monitor. He's a full grown male at just about two and a half feet. What's really interesting about them, if you know anything about monitors, is their extreme level of intelligence. And you'll see that when he's eating, he actually grabs a roach and he will use objects in his enclosure to safely get it into a position in his jaws so that he can swallow it. Well, safely, not so much for the roach, right? So we're gonna put him in and uh, let him get to work. Some species need really, really tiny prey, like poison dart frogs, which we keep, so we have fruit fly cultures. This duckweed, driftwood, and live plants is an ambush predator. Jada, our Mata Mata turtle, lives in this big center unit, and the tank is doing fantastic. It's bioactive, the plants are growing well, there's live snails in here, and she just loves lurking around the bottom hunting for live fish. So all we do is we pour the fish in, and we let her do everything else. She gets to exhibit naturalistic behavior, and she is pretty darn good at it. thawed small rat. Why? Because our snakes have to eat too. A lot of people don't associate Garden State tortoise with snakes, but they're actually a much bigger part of what we do here as a whole than one might think. This is Opal. He's a white oak gray rat snake. He's an absolute sweetheart, but he is an animal that eats rodents. Just one snake, one snake is responsible for eating so many rodents, which then benefits us as humans directly. So, Try to show a little respect for them. Try to show a little bit more tolerance for them because they are, in fact, one of the planet's most incredible animals. Ready, buddy? Opal, being the rat snake, is a colubrid, meaning he is a constrictor. Now, being he's a captive bred snake and he's so used to being in captivity and being used to having his food just handed to him like that, he doesn't usually grab the uh, rodent and then wrap around it like he would if he were a wild snake or if the rat was in fact alive. 
but you'll still get to see the amazing way that these animals swallow their prey whole. Rocky and Blue are rhinoceros iguanas. They got a lot of space in here, but obviously we do put them outside in the summer. They absolutely love bananas. This is one of those items that should just be offered as a treat every once in a while, but you can see just how much they love them. I'm gonna go in here with these two dinosaurs right now and try not to get my hands ripped off. John Angus. Okay, you guys gotta get down. You gotta get down, girly. Excuse me. Excuse me, pal. If you want food, I need to come in there. Hey guys, look what I got. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Rhino iguanas. Uh, I better wait till he stops doing that. Rhino iguanas are large, powerful lizards. There he is. Here, Rock. Rhino iguanas are. L <laughs> Their diet is not unlike tortoises in the form of getting dark leafy greens, flowers, and weeds. And that's what they mostly get most of the time. Of course, they get some uh, commercial diet. They love both iguana and Missouri tortoise diet. But they get the banana and the peel because you know what? When you give them the peel, you are giving them a little bit of added nutrition, which is good since this is such a sugary treat. Add a girl blue. There you go. Here's Mickey, our giant Aldabra tortoise, who's not so giant yet. I'm starting to think Mickey's a female based on some traits, but like I've told you guys in many videos, you just can't be sure with this tortoise until it really is fully grown. Now, if Mickey is a female, she will be between three and 400 pounds. If Mickey is a male, he would be between five and 600 pounds. So if it's a female, you do save a few hundred pounds there. Just like with the iguanas, bananas are strictly an occasional treat, but the tortoises do love them. And you know, one of the things that we like to do with the big species like this is train them basically by luring them with their favorite food items, which is normally a treat like a banana because at some point this tortoise is gonna be way too heavy to carry. So when Mickey has to come inside for the winter or go back outside in the summer, it'll be easier to lure him or her with something like a banana. And you gotta admit it, it it's, it's just awesome to see them eat something they like so much. All right, now we're gonna feed Chief Brody the alligator snapping turtle. We picked up a bunch of fresh seafood for him from a seafood market. Just to get you guys up to speed on him, his blood works good, he has no parasites, and his x-rays are free and clear of anything. So he is relatively healthy, he just needs to put a lot of weight on, which again is why we have him in this small tub for the winter, and then in the spring, he's gonna go outside into a huge naturalistic pond. So let's see what he likes. We'll, tr we'll try the uh, Ronzino first. Sometimes this happens, you go out, you spend money on food items that are supposed to be accepted by the animals, but it's not. So it seems like Chief Brody does not want the Bronzino, which is unfortunate because it's got the head and the guts and everything, which is what he really needs. So let's see if he will eat catfish fillets. Uh, already we got a better response, look at this. We'll 
somebody's a little gassy. <laughs> this is good though. Chief Brody is passing everything we're feeding him, including the clam shells from the clams that he eats because that is what he's supposed to be eating. Some of the things he's supposed to eat. But uh, he seems to be a little bit more interested in uh, going to the bathroom right now than eating, so we're gonna leave him be. So Chief Brody may have not liked everything I bought for him today, but that's okay because we have plenty of other animals that we can also use these items for. So I cut up little chunks of the uh, fresh catfish to give to our Diamondback Terrapins and anybody else in this communal tank like Dotsie the Spotted Turtle. Of course, we gotta feed Otis. <laughs> you hungry? Show him the roach. Look, a roach. Not, not me, the roach. The roach. There we go. Here, go, go get it. Here's your instinct. No, no instinct in you left, I guess. Come on, look, 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 look. Look, look. There it is. Come on. Hello, it's lunch time. Come on. And of course, we gotta feed Otis. Doobie roaches, another great food source for box turtles, and he loves every minute of them. So, even though it's winter, I have a long day's work ahead of me, because even though you got to see me feed quite a few animals, there are still so many more. Right, buddy? Let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> 